in the k-epsilon turbulence model, the eddy viscosity is calculated in terms of two parameters, k and epsilon. k is the turbulent kinetic energy. And it's a measure of how much energy is contained in the fluctuations. So larger the turbulent fluctuations, larger is k. Epsilon is the turbulent dissipation it is a measure of the rate at which turbulent kinetic energy is dissipated. So the dissipation is killing the turbulent kinetic energy. The eddy viscosity mu t is uh, calculated from k and epsilon in this fashion, and this is an approximate relationship. This is all modeling. Um, it's guesswork based on experimental observations and, and physical arguments. And if k is higher, the turbulent there's more turbulent fluctuations and the eddy viscosity is higher. If epsilon is higher, the, uh, the fluctuations are being killed at a higher rate, and so the eddy viscosity is lower. And k, so now you know you, one needs to determine k and epsilon, and the k epsilon turbulence model adds two additional conservation equations one each for k and epsilon. It gets pretty complicated. Um, we don't have to worry about the conservation equations for k and epsilon at, uh, at least at this stage because they are coded into ANSYS Fluent. Let's take a look at the summary of the governing equations. We have uh, Reynolds average continuity, Reynolds average Navier-Stokes in the x direction, and we get this extra term, which is uh, due to the Reynolds stresses. And similarly, you get Reynolds average Navier-Stokes in the y direction. And to calculate these two terms, one needs the eddy viscosity. The eddy viscosity is calculated from k and epsilon. And we have a conservation equation for k that looks in, that's a partial differential equation that looks uh, similar to that, as well as the conservation equation for epsilon. So we have one, two, three, four, five. We have five um, conservation uh, equations, which are all partial differential equations. And we have the unknown fields we need to determine are the Reynolds average velocities, the Reynolds average pressure, and k and epsilon. So we have um, as many equations as we need to compute our unknown fields. It's a pretty complicated set of equations, and the only reason we are able to solve it is because we have the ANSYS Fluent Solver at our disposal. The domain over which we'll be solving the governing equations is shown over here, and this is a schematic, it's not to scale. We'll be solving the governing equations in the region between the airfoil and an outer boundary, that the shape of which I have picked. Really, the outer boundary should be at infinity, and so by putting it you know, at some finite distance, we are introducing an approximation and as part of the verification, we need to check what is the effect of moving this outer boundary out. We'll put it at uh, about 12 and a half chord lengths away in, the, in our simulation. And at the region of the outer boundary where I, um, that's highlighted in red, I'm going to impose free stream conditions. So the, at the free stream, the velocity is V infinity, and it's coming in at an angle alpha. And from that, I can calculate the U and V components of the velocity. In this case, these are Reynolds average values. I also need to give K and epsilon at, the, um, at this boundary, at the, where the flow is coming in, because we are solving conservation equations for K and epsilon. And we'll give guess values that are um, correspond to low levels of turbulence. And most of the turbulence is going to be generated in the viscous regions around the airfoil. 
where the flow is going out, as usual, I will impose a, a pressure boundary condition. And at the airfoil, I have no slip written in terms of uh, the Reynolds average velocities. There are also boundary conditions on K and epsilon, which I will let the solver worry about. At this point, we have an idea of what the mathematical model is that we'll be solving using Fluent uh, for this particular case study.